who can see this? Who can see the whiteboard where it says canine body language? <coughs> oh, it's been a long day. Chris, I see you typing. Guys, wherever Chris's comment comes up, where it says, hi, Jay, yep, can see it all. Awesome, Chris, love it. Um, that's the chat box for those of you that are new to the webinars. So if you need to write anything, you know, there'll be, I'll be opening for questions all the way through, etc. That's the chat box. Hi, I'm early. Rosie, I'm in. Hi there. Play. My shepherd's just here. Chilling. So we'll just wait a few minutes for people to come in and stuff. If anyone's got any questions before we start, ask away. All right, let me just make sure that there's enough. Basically, in ClickMeeting, which is the software that I use for this, you can only record X amount of hours. Oh, we've got plenty left, plenty. Shannon, hey, Laura, hey. Okay, cool. So we have one minute, and we'll get going. As you can see by the title, and by what I've been talking about all week, white balance keeps going, I don't know why. Tonight's webinar is going to be about canine body language. So basically, on the next several slides, 10, I think seven of them are about canine body language. And there's going to be a picture of a dog with some writing around it, you know, like tail down, ears back. Um, and then above it, there's going to be a purple box. Under that purple box is going to be the answer to what that body language is. So we're going to play like a quiz back and forth. Jamie, hey, how's it going? Okay, it's, um, oh, let me just, so, uh, let's get rid of that, let's get rid of that, let's get rid of that. Bruce in bad books, dumped his tummy my coffee. Well, so you get used to it. So why is white balance doing this? Guys, if anyone knows anything about white balance, like you see now, I'm a normal human color, but then I look like I've got some kind of grayed out illness. Need to swap to computer. Laura, do that, because then you'll see the whiteboard. I don't think you can see the whiteboard from mobile devices. iPad, you probably can. I don't think you can from iPads. Right, so, eight o'clock. Let's get going. Let's get going. So, the picture on the left of your screen. Rolls onto back, exposing stomach and throat. Ears flat back, head turns to avoid direct eye contact, eyes partly closed, nose and forehead smooth, corner of mouth back, may sprinkle drops of urine, tail tucked. Who knows what this body language is? Like, what would your guess be? This is what we're going to do through this webinar. So then these purple boxes here, the purple box that's moving slightly, is covering the answer. Submissive, submissive, scared. Any more for any more? So I'm only going to give you like 30 seconds to answer these guys, so if you don't, that's fine. <coughs> so before we go on, the, the word submissive is interesting to me. It's something we're going to cover as we go on. Extreme fear. So massive amounts of fear. We're not talking like a car goes past and the dog's like, cool. No, I'm not sure about that. I'm talking flat out fear. If your dog ever fucking does this in training, you have made a massive mistake. Win me immediately. So, what do I agree with and not agree with on this? Ears flat back. Yep. Great. Head turns to avoid direct eye contact. So, dogs, are, dogs in, in the fear state are not going to want direct eye contact with you. Because it's, it's easier for them to avoid that. They're going to avoidance. Eyes partly closed. Mm -hmm. If you want, sometimes. Corner of mouth back. So watching for mouths, mouths is an interesting one because they're so subtle and they can tell you so much. Stop pushing me. Um, 
Sprinkling drops fury. That might be sprinkling, or they might just pee everywhere. Like in extreme fear, dogs do just pee everywhere. It's not good. And tail tucked, so that's an obvious fear response. I'm going to do this next one. Um, and then I've, I've missed a slide out. I didn't put it in. Basically, when I set this, knock it off. When I set this webinar up, also, we were talking about positive punishment the other day. There was some. And that's how brief it is. Why do they pee when really scared? Aaron, that's like saying, why do they tuck their tail? Or why do they roll on the back? Or it's, it's a natural fear response in all animals. Humans pee when they're really scared as well. I don't know what the science, physio, physiological science behind that is. Um, yeah, so what I was saying, I'm going to do this next one. Um, and then I'm going to put another picture on top, if I can. I hope I can. Um, because I've missed a slide out, and it's quite interesting. So, tail horizontal, not stiff or bristled. Ears forward, may twitch if they're trying to catch a sound. Eyes wide, smooth nose and forehead, mouth closed. Slight forward lean, standing tall on their toes. Tail may move slightly from side to side. Aaron says alert. Alert, focused. Anyone else want to guess? Before I delete it. Five. Get down. My dog stood behind my laptop. Basically, my sofa's got like a foot stool she stood on. Three, two, one. Boom. Aaron, Rosie, five points. Yeah, so alert. Now, this is where I want to get a bit more into talking about what these body languages mean, what to look out for, when they can be good, when they can be bad. Alert body language is neither good or bad without a situational, um, without a situation. I can't think of the word. So, an alert body language when we're doing protection work is great. An alert body language when you're playing with a ball is great. An alert body language when you're doing obedience, great. An alert body language to a dog that's already reactive when it's looking at another dog. This, this, um, this body language here, for those of you with reactive dogs, is your first big giveaway that World War Three is about to fucking break loose. So when the dogs get into this alert state of mind, this is when it escalates humongously. It's at this point, we're going to go a bit more into reactivity and stuff another day, but it's at this point that things need addressing. Ideally, just before this point. So don't wait for all the all the symptoms. You know, you don't need a straight tail and the ears forward and the tail swinging from side to side and straight forward lean. Eyes wide as well. There's something I want to add more onto that. Just eyes wide isn't always an alert body language. Their eyes transfix. So they go into this transfixed state. You are going to do really fucking well to get into your dog's head anything beyond this. Like, this is where the headaches start. But like I say, don't see alert body language as a bad thing. Because if your dog's looking at you like this, and you're doing obedience, then that's probably a good thing. I mean, unless it's about to kill you. Always with just white balance. I'm going to buy, like, a super expensive, fancy webcam to use on these at some point. Goose does this. Yeah, Rosie, probably before he barks at people. Or, or drags you over to them. So what I'm going to do now, this is like a little um, pre, pre, uh, it's when I lean forward the white balance happens, isn't it? So this is a little pretense to the rest of the webinar. The technique called temp, it's quite famous in the dog world. I'm going to, right, so where it says reading canine body language, temp. It stands for tail, ears, and eyes, mouth, and posture. So tail, ears, and eyes, mouth, posture. I'm going to put that off the whiteboard just so we can see all of the things. How on earth do I get rid of that surface? Oh, no, I don't want to rub it all out. I'm going to have to. Okay, so while I'm rubbing this out, you start having a read of what, what these things are. So these are like really basic overviews of, of various different body languages. So we've got relaxed in a down. We've got relaxed stood up. Submissive, happy, I'm not a threat. 
The word submissive and dominant I don't really like, but it, because it's so commonly misused within dog training. Um, it's it's often used as this like alpha rolling, alpha male horse shit. That's just a crocky shit. There's, there's no other way around it. So submissive generally means not wanting to have a fight. Dominant often means willing to have a fight. Not necessarily want to, but willing. Happy, ready to play, submissive. Please leave me alone. Anxious, stressed, terrified. They did the happy not threat because he met a bear from Malamute today. Where's happy not threat? Oh, there on his back, yeah. So dogs being on the back is usually a good sign. I mean, depending on what you want. You don't have a protection dog doing that. But, you know, your pet dog, great. So ones that I want to talk about. I'm just going to talk about these real briefly. Relaxed in a down. This is the behavior I look for in my own house. Like, relaxed in a down. That body language there is that body language there. Just chilled out. You know, not, I wonder if I can reach my coffee without trashing this white balance. Oh, that was a fair effort. Um, oh, okay. Guys, if any of you are on WhatsApp at the same time, can you help the other people that are struggling to get on? Kerry Dodsworth, can't see a link on the Facebook page. Tell Kerry that it's the top fucking post. Like, literally the top post. Okay. Um, yeah, relaxing in there now. Look for that in your house all the time. It's super useful. You want your dog to be relaxed in the house. I don't want them... Um, thanks, Alexi. I don't want them... Uh, thanks, Ajaz, as well. I don't want them bouncing off the walls 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Like They've got fucking rest. They have hard days. So that's, that's one to look for in your house. Ready to play. This one's interesting because this one can often have lots of teeth out with it and foam and, you know, they can, they can look nasty in this state, but you've got to look for the subtle body languages. We're going to go into that later. Please leave me alone. This is a good one. My dogs do this to me. Oh, I want to stroke you because you're my dog and I want to stroke you. Well, cool fucking story, bro. Your dog doesn't want to be anywhere near you because he wants to leave him alone. We have to respect our dogs and their space and what they want. Because they're, they're their own creatures. Like, you can't demand attention off them all the time. Sure, I love stroke metal. But sometimes she gets up, walks away, and looks at me like this picture. I just have to accept that. I remember loads of times hearing people say, if your dog's on top of you in any way, it's dominating you. Zane's very smiling, full of teeth when playing. Yeah, Aaron. First part of that is horse shit. I wrote all the clams on me all the time because he wants to fucking cuddle. Um, smiling, full of teeth, very common shepherd thing. So fearful and ready to fight, this is one that you need to watch out for. If your dog's in this state, these pictures are not amazing, like they're not going into much detail. But if your dog's in this state, just, just be aware of what's going on. Wary, unsure, and suspicious, this can turn into other things very quickly. So a wary, unsure, suspicious dog can turn into fearful, ready to fight, or it can turn into ready to play, or it can turn into defensive territorial, or it can turn into stalking. Stalking is another really interesting one. This body language is really obvious, and I've not gone into it in more detail later because there's just fucking an endless amount. Like, where do you stop? Stalking, they'll drop their body lower to the floor, their eyes will be completely transfixed, and they sort of walk like a chameleon, like one foot at a time. They're stalking prey. If the dog's stalking something, you're about to have a problem. Because that problem is... Um, Usually going to be stalking another dog, stalking a person, stalking a rabbit, stalking a bird. It's going to end in, end in headaches. Okay. That's just a quick overview. The reason I wanted to bring that up really wasn't for these body languages. It was um, for the temp method. So tail, ears and, ears and eyes, mouth, posture. They're, all, they're probably the biggest five indicators of body language, you know, it'd be easiest to read. There are other things as well, like for, yeah, for, that's the only other one I can think of. Expression, brow, there's an endless amount. But if you just read from tail, ears and eyes, mouth, posture, you're gonna be pretty good at reading body language. So, same stalk sometimes before playing. Yeah, Erin, this is why, like, there's no black and white in this webinar at all. There's not going to be any black and white because everything's 
so subjective to the dog in hand and the moment in hand and what's going on. It's a tough game. Body language is a really tough game, but it's one that I feel should be taught more because not enough people know anything about it. You know, you guys probably have got a pretty good handle on it. Some people have got no idea. Show them these pictures and they'll be like, no, no idea. Shelby flings herself on me because she's been taught to cuddle, but it terrifies my cousins to watch. So, picture on the left. Hackles raised. Ears back. Pupils dilated. Nose wrinkled. Lips slightly curled. Teeth may be somewhat visible. Corner of mouth pulled back. Notice that corner of the mouth pulled back again. It's a common theme here. Tail tucked, little or no movement. Body lowered. What is this body language? You saw a dog doing this? What, what, what's the saying? Go remember, guys, dogs are creatures of body language. They're not creatures of verbal language like we are. Scared, defensive, fear aggressive, fear aggressive. Bum, 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 roll, please. Fear aggressive. Good work, guys. Good work. I'm fucking impressed. Really impressed. Like I say, the majority of the public don't have a fucking clue about any of this. You show them that dog and they'll be like, yeah, it looks fine. So, fear aggressive. The, the dog in this picture is likely going to want to desperately go backwards. Um, it's not going to want to come out and fight. However, it will fight should it be given no other option. This body language off lead generally isn't that dangerous because the dog will try and get away. This body language on lead can very quickly flick into full fight. Um, so, nose wrinkled, you're unlikely to see that. Lips slightly curled. You're definitely going to see that because we're pre-programmed as humans to look at dogs' teeth. When they're out, we tend to back off. Ears back. Don't get stuck on ears back being a bad thing because when I stroke my shepherd, ears back can also be a relaxing response. See her ears there? And now she's not going to do it. But anyway, when I stroke her, there we go, they're going back. They're not pinned back. They're not glued to her head. But they come forward. It's fine. Body lowered, you'll see that. Tail tucked, you'll see that. Again, we're pre-programmed as humans to look at dogs' tails too, because wagging tail means happy dog. It fucking doesn't, by the way. Just for those of you who think it does. So, next picture. Forehead smooth. Eye contact brief and indirect. Licks at face of dominant dog or the air. Don't like this dominant dog shit, but hey, we'll let it go. Corner of the mouth back, paw raised. May leave sweaty footprints. You're never going to see that in real life. Tail down, may wag slightly, body lowered. What is the behavior? What is the body language? Apologetic, Rosie, that's a good word. I want to address that. Calm, submissive, fearful, stressed. All good answers. Fear, worried. So, Laurie, yeah, you were the closest. Um, Rosie, the reason this isn't apologetic is because apology needs the rational mind to exist. So when you apologize to someone, something, you have to um, go into a story of why you're apologizing. You know, oh, I did this one X amount of weeks ago, I should apologize for that because of their, their behavior is telling me that they're uncomfortable with it. Dogs don't have the rational mind like we have, they're associative lens. <coughs> Things done that loads of times. Aaron, look out for that. It's a bit of a fear response. We're not talking flat out fear here. Just, you know, I'm a bit worried. I'm a bit concerned about something that's going on. This could be anything. A like, dog could come up to you like this. It doesn't mean you're the fear provoker. It could be a car outside or a knock on the door or anything. The tail wag, the tail wag in this state is usually quite erratic, fast, like this. But it's not gonna it's not gonna wag right across. Body lowered, yeah, you'll see that. Ears back, you'll see that. Forehead smooth, this depends massively on the dog. We're going to get into that a bit later. Um, Legs at the face of the dominant dog. Like I say, I don't like that dominant dog stuff. Don't think I can join the webinar because my Kindle won't let me load WhatsApp. You don't need WhatsApp. I feel like it's fairly simple to get on. The 11 of you that are here... Don't need WhatsApp. It's on the Facebook group. Oh, people can catch it on their replay. 
<coughs> corner of the mouth back again. Start looking at that more carefully because corner of the mouth. This this part of the mouth here being pulled back is often some kind of stress response to something. Paw raised. You're not going to see that super often, but you might see it. Next slide. Number four. So dog on the left. Ears up, but not forward. Head high, mouth open, slightly, just a bit. Tongue exposed. Loose stance, weight flat on all four feet, tail down and relaxed. I imagine all of you will get this one. This is an obvious one. Relaxed, confident, relaxed, chilled out. Shelby has a tendency to do this. She thinks she's going to uh, Yeah, Alexia. Shelby has a tendency to do this if she is uncomfortable, not if she thinks she's uncomfortable. Because if she thinks she is, then she's uncomfortable. Relaxed, happy, relaxed. Good answers, guys. Good answers. Relaxed or approachable. The word that you attach to this is completely irrelevant. Relaxed, happy, chilled out, approachable. It makes no difference. All of you have seen this in your dogs every single day. This is just the body language that we're looking for in normal day-to-day -day life. You know, like if I'm making a coffee in the kitchen and I turn around, I expect to see my dog stood like this. Easy one. Right, so about halfway through the body languages, maybe a bit more. Has anyone any questions on any of them so far? I'm going to open it up for, stop it, for a Q&A. Just a brief one. Questions, guys? Questions? What should you do if Zane's doing the fear or worry? Um, Erin, you need to work out why Zane's doing the fear, worry, body language. Something's triggering it. Dogs don't do things for no reason. When Shelby shows signs of being uncomfortable, what can we do to show her without anthropomorphizing her? Um, yeah, so same thing. Exactly the same thing. You need to find out what's causing that fear response, stress response. Wouldn't it be nice if him and did the same? There, I'm not following. Yeah, so guys, you need to find out what's causing that stress response. There's something causing it. Dogs don't just throw body language out for a laugh. Often another dog. And Erin, you need to change the association to other dogs. No other disease if she shits on the floor. She's scared of me. Carrie, yeah, 100%. She's scared of the consequence that comes from shitting on the floor because you've shouted at her or waxed her or thrown her outside. Um, you need to change change the uh, association to that. We adopted her six weeks ago. Okay, maybe you haven't then. Somebody has either thwacked her or shouted at her or screamed at her or thrown her outside when she shits on the floor. So when she shits on the floor, if you catch her, then yeah, by all means, tell her to knock it off and put her outside. If you don't catch her, ignore it and put her outside. There's no big deal. If you start making a big deal on toilet training, you get other problems. Jake, can you prompt me when I need to look at the whiteboard on the iPad? Um, Rosie, you kind of need the whiteboard all the way through this this one. This is all whiteboard, so don't worry about seeing me. I'm not going to be showing you anything here, really. Don't K me just because you can't get on the webinar. Fucking Ben, you ass. Cool, tap. No problem. Okay. Next. Next. Oh, sugar. Deleted it before I asked you. Oh, we got some answers, though. Well, uh, yeah, bang on. I think you all knew this one. And you all know this one because of the famous playback. It's such a fucking prolific piece of body language in dog training. And I wish all the others were as prolific as this one is. Because you ask... 10 people what, what a plain dog looks like, five of them are going to mention a play that. So tail up, yeah, you're going to see that. Broadly waving tail, so that means big swooping, stop licking, uh, scratching, whatever you're doing. You know, big swooping motions with the tail. Ears up, they're in play, you know what play looks like. Mouth open, mouth's usually open because they're running around, they're tired. Front end lower by bent four balls. Dog will usually hold this position for only a moment before breaking into a run in some random direction. Zoomies, many of you call them the zoomies. Again, something I get 
Before being jumped at. Yeah, absolutely. Bruce does this. Guys, if your dog's doing this, this is great. Play dolls are awesome. Next. Dog on the left. Ears forward. Maybe spread slightly to the side. Form a wide V-shape. Forehead may show vertical wrinkle. Nose wrinkle. Lips curl. Big giveaway. Teeth and often gums are visible. Mouth open and C-shaped. Corner of mouth is forward. Stiff levigous stance. Body leaning slightly forward. The tail is stiff but may seem to quiver or vibrate from side to side. Tail raised and bristle. I'm going to bite your face off. Confident aggressive. Any more? Warning. Tense aggressive. So confident aggressive. Yeah, a lot of this behavior is confident aggressive. Over aroused, yeah, carry possibly. The teeth, the tail is often over aroused. The hackles can be over arousal. The teeth, not so much. The shape of the mouth, not so much. The VDS, not so much. Um, so, what do I agree with and not agree with on this one? Tail stiff, but maybe seem to quiver or vibrate. Yes, you'll absolutely see that. Tail raised and bristled. You won't always see a bristled tail. Hackles raised. Right, so dogs, 90% of dogs will only raise their hackles when they're unsure of something. It makes them bigger, it makes them a more intimidating presence. Some dogs will raise their hackles when you get a ball out, because excitement, arousal can raise the hackles. Um, some dogs will do it in full aggression. <coughs> My shepherd raises her hackles in full protection. She wouldn't dream of doing it because something scared her. Shadow will hackle both with us and both with arousal and warning. Nose wrinkled. You'll see that in more serious cases of this. Um, I'll try and get you a picture. I'll try. I'll get my right to guard something. And I'll get you a picture of it. Bruce's tail puffs out too, and he don't like someone. Yeah, Rosie. So that's less tense, aggressive, and more unsure than making myself big. So you go away. <coughs> mouth open and C-shaped. Yeah, you'll notice this C-shaped mouth. So around this area here. Nope. Around this area here. The mouth will be C-shaped. They sort of snarl all their mouth back. Stiff legged stance, body leaning forward. So they're leaning forward, ready to say, let's have a fight. I'm game. I love how the way of saying they don't like someone is to go poof. This behaviour to my mum's dog was what prompted me to contact you last week. Yeah, Carrie. This is not a great body language to be seen. Ever. I can't think of a great time that you'd ever want to see this. So, next one. Stressed. Body lowered, ears back, pupils dilated. Rapid panting with corner of mouth back. Sweating through pads. Again, you'll never see dogs sweating through the pads, guys. They can. It happens. But chances of you seeing it, you're going to walk them on a piece of I don't know, tracing paper or something. You're not going to see it. Apparently, I need to take notes because Shelby just brought me a pen. Stress, fearful, stress, stressed, scared. Dun dun dun, stressed. Good work, guys. I'm impressed. What this is told, but the reason I've done it this way is so I could get a handle on who knows what about canine body language. So the next canine body language we want to do in I don't know, three months or something, you can go way more into detail, advanced body language. Because all of you, are, you, can, you can see this, you can spot this. I agree with all of these except sweating through pads. I'm not saying sweating through the pads doesn't happen, but you're never going to fucking see it in a million years. How are you going to see them sweating through the pads? They're running on a grass field most of the time. Or concrete. They're not going to pour water out through them. So, tail down. The tail down is important here as well. Not tail tucked. Tail down. It, it scoops up at the end. Um, that, scoop, that low scooped tail is a great sign of stress. And the panting. The panting will be really rapid. <laughs> fireworks, yeah. Fireworks cause this to a lot of dogs. Fireworks are such an easy association to change as well, so as we approach fireworks season, we'll go into that. Okay, next one. Timing signals. Timing signals are something that a lot of people don't know about. They probably do know about it, they just don't know that they're called timing signals. So timing signals are a set of communication skills that our dogs have to resolve conflict. 
In other words, instead of fighting another dog or predator, they display these signs to help their opponent understand, I don't like the word opponent, by the way, understand that they're not interested in the conflict. All dogs, regardless of breed, have learned calming signals, but they may be more clear in some breeds than others. This is thanks to physical characteristics that can make these signs more apparent. So, a great example of dogs that are not great at giving calming signals are boxers. A lot of them have got a dog tail, so they can't give any tail calming signals. And they've got this squished face that never really moves. Like, there's no expression in it. Boxers get attacked a lot. Like, more than other dogs. Because they can't... They can't show what they're feeling very well. Pugs. French Bulldogs, like all these squished faced dogs, they've got four brows all the time. They can't express these things, they can't move their ears, they can't do anything. They end up in fights a lot more often than, uh, than other dogs. Brachy breeds, yeah, exactly. For those of you who don't know what election means by brachy, brachycephalic, so squashed face dogs. Okay. Number seven. Whale eye is very often found on calming signals. However, let me ask that whale eye is not always a calming signal. Whale eye can fully mean, you fucking come in any closer, I'm going to bite your face off. No, no, not Brachiosaurus, sorry. Um, so, be careful with whale eye. Whale eye can be, don't come near me, I don't want a conflict. So, it's not always clear whether a dog's asserting himself, scared or submissive. With whale eye, or looking away, this is particularly true. A dog giving the whale eye can quickly become aggressive. However, breaking eye contact is also the most common sign a dog wants to disengage. So you might get whale eye, and then the dog will look away, and they'll give you whale eye and look away. This is a dog that really doesn't want to engage in a fight with you, but will if it, if it really needs to. You know, it's like it's a more unsure kind of signal. I'm telling you that I don't want to fight, but you, keep, you look like you really want it. However, a dog that just whale eyes you, if I put a bone in my right while it's cage now and walked over, he'd whale eye me, and if I moved, he'd bang my face off. Is this the same for sure? I'll be focused on something that doesn't want to look at me. Uh, AKA the chickens. No, no, no. So that's transfiction. That's yeah. I'm staring at these chickens. She just doesn't give a shit about you because your reward's nowhere near as high as the reward of chasing the chickens. And then one more example of this. Yawning. As it says, a dog is yawning might just be sleepy. However, a dog in what it says here is a dog who encounters another dog and begins to yawn is showing some stress. He's sending out non confrontational signal. So, yes, this can be true. But equally, like if I brought my shit to an ear and he yawned, it's not because he's confronted one of the other dogs because it's half eight at night and it's tired. It's yawning out of context. So these behaviours out of context. They're also called displacement behaviours. So completely out of context behaviours. A displacement behavior might be eating grass. If the dog isn't a grass eater, or it, like my rotis are not a grass eater, but if I put too much stress on him in training, he starts eating grass. They might lick a wall, they might lick their paws, they might chew their leg. Displacement behaviors are really, really quite interesting. Um, they're interesting to look at because you can see how your training's going, how the session's going, how much stress the dog's in. So it's great having an opinion. Oh, I didn't put much stress on him today. Cool fucking story, look at your dog. The dog will always tell you whether you're going right or wrong. Always. After injuring her leg, Shelby has started licking pillows. But quite probably stress. Because she's in pain. Good shake once pressure is off. Yeah, shaking. That's another displacement behavior. Camera signal. Um, shaking's a really common one. And sniffing's a really common one. A lot of people, when they compete at high level, will get their dog out, put it in a harness or some form of equipment that means we're not training. And let it sniff on the field. It relieves so much stress to the dog. Um, and like you say, for shaking is exactly the same thing. Daisy always looks at my arms and hands from laying down and trying to pair. Is that stress? April, the key to your answer there is always. Daisy always licks my arms and hands. So no, because it's not an out of context behaviour. If Daisy never licked your arms and hands and then you had a guest round and she started licking your arms and hands, then yeah, that's probably not stress. I know a lot of you choose a pause a lot, doesn't help she's severely overweight. Aaron, that could be one of a million things. Storm licks his legs. Don, in stress or in general? Shaking's a great way to see when we're away from the road. Don, stress. 
you need to know your dog. If my shepherd's eating grass, it's not through stress. But if my rot is, I know damn well that's stress behavior. And then I have to work out what's causing that stress and how to deal with it. Why it constantly shakes off during walks? Is it stress? Okay, if it's out of context, then yeah, probably. She can be stressed about anything though. Stress isn't stress in the dog world is not the same as stress in the human world. Stress in the human world is always a very bad thing. Stress in the dog world can be overstimulation, um, hyperarousal, too much physical pressure, too much verbal pressure, um, too much strictness. It can be so many things. So the stress on her walk might be that she needs to get off the lead and run. How often does she get off the lead and run? That would be my first guess. Dang it, I'm late. Sure, you are incredibly late. So late that the next slide says questions on it. <laughs> Got it. Perfect. So, didn't take as long as I expected because a lot of you knew the answers. Questions? Let's go. Any questions? Any all? Negating quivering in a dog. Alexia, if the dog's quivering, as in trembling, there's something horrendously wrong. So something is extremely stressful to that dog. Fear, that's fear. Um, you need to work out what that thing is and then readdress it. Oh, roads. Yeah, well, we need to address the roads thing. How do I stop a scared dog expressing his glands? Well, you don't. Dogs expressing their glands in fear is completely normal. What you need to do is stop the dog being scared of the thing. Um, dogs expressing their glands not in fear is super normal as well. This is why it's a really grey area of body language because it can mean so many things. I've been told and seen dogs sneezing during play and was told it's just play. Yeah, it's called appeasement behaviours. Um, Aaron, if you Google appeasement behaviours, you'll have a look. It's a good thing. Even leaving the house, if she sees a collar, that's... Why have I lost the end? Oh, that's it. Okay, there we go. Right, let's make this chat box a bit bigger. Yeah, so the association's to the collar. The association's clearly not to the traffic, because if you put her on a different collar, she's fine in the traffic. So the association has been built to that collar by the traffic previous up in the collar. It's the easiest way around that, unless you want to start building new associations to the collar, which is more of a headache. Daisy always has a way light. Isn't that common in what is? Yeah, Tina, more common in what is. They're a way light breed. However, if she's always got a way light, she's communicating something with you. They've got, what is have got a way light more? Because they've got such a dark eye. So when you see the whites of their eyes, it's much more pronounced. It's not that they do it more often, it's that it's more obvious. They've also got deep set, almond shaped eyes. That's what the breed standard says. Side of things, eh? Whoa, who's that? Oh, Danny Wells is live tonight. Danny Wells is a trainer who blocked me and I've never spoken to him in my life. Um, what we got? It's all the colours though, that's it. And Hansi, she's finally going out the front to play. Yeah, so you've got an association to colours or to, to restrictive equipment. So we need to address that. Lola realise a lot too, even when tickling and playing. Yeah, Kerry, like I say, it needs to be taken in context. Way like can, can be um, a, good, a good thing or a bad thing. We talked recently about Damascus barking and raising his hackles at passerbys and squirrels and anything that's new in our area. He immediately corrects me when he goes to bark at something new and teasing him with a stick to keep his attention, not sounding. But sometimes he. Won't hold focus. Is there anything else that you can suggest? April, you've been doing this for like all of three seconds. Stop bribing him with a stick to start with. Bribing is fine until you haven't got the fucking stick. Then what are you going to do? And because you've been doing this for all of three seconds, like teaching impulse control to a dog and a reassociation of attention takes months. 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 Keep working. Keep working. So at least we understand that the squirrel, or the thing that he's going to bark at, brings him nothing except correction, 
and then putting his attention back on you brings him reward. That should have said, walk out of the... Oh, when a dog went crazy in the Khaleesi the other night, Khaleesi almost froze and wouldn't take treats. Was she just scared? Yeah, don't. Scared. Fear. 100%. Uh, the last who has a dog-aggressive dog said he attacked Zane because he has a dark face and can't read his expression. I think that's bullshit. Mm. Yeah, I would call bullshit as well. Personally. All of my dogs, every single one of my dogs has got a dark face. All of them. All four. Two of them are black, one of them is black and tan, and one of them is sable with a black face. Never had any issues. That sounds suspicious, like somebody who read something on the internet once, and then, uh, and then decided to tell everyone about it. Right, guys, any more for any more? Looks like we're starting back at the beginning with training. Yeah, Alexia, absolutely, 100%. Right back to the beginning. As in, collar on, reward, collar off. Takes time. The reason people struggle so much as well with all behaviors is because they try and rush. So they spend six months trying to rush and then they have to go back to the beginning. If they've just gone back to the beginning in the first place, in six months' time, they've been finished. Slowly, slowly catch a monkey. Exactly. Training plan making time. Yeah, exactly as well. You've got to make these plans that you've got to put steps together. It's just the way of the world. In other news, sad news, all the IPO rules have just changed, which is a fucking headache. And the name of IPO has changed. Why? FCI, what are you doing? Retraining Bruce to walk and leave from the start again. It's frustrating, but we'll be worth it in the end. Yeah, Rosie, retraining right from the beginning. Completely, from day one, as if he'd never been on lead. Because, like I say, what you'll do is try and rush ahead. Not you personally, but everybody. You'll try and rush ahead, and you'll waste six months trying to rush, getting nowhere. If you'd have just started properly and taken the appropriate steps, you'd have been finished in them six months. Since Shelby is on rest, I can work on collars and shit. Yeah, perfect time to do it. Alright guys, it's been a pleasure, enjoyed that. Um, right, how many people are in here right now? I'm going to put a little competition. Well, there's 14 people watching live. There's currently 52 members in the academy. I want all of you after this to message one of your friends with a dog and get them in the academy. It's fucking free, they have nothing to lose, they can cancel at any time they want. There's 52 now. Plus 14 is 66. So 66 members by the end of the night. And then 14 of you will get a free one-to-one -one session or a free Skype session, whichever you want. Welcome to Tuesday on Loose Lead. Did a bit of loose today. Not many just sped up. Yeah, Aaron, again, you've been working on this all of fucking three seconds as well. Just to put in perspective, guys, you see my dogs and you're like, oh my God, they're working so well. There's two years of training 14 times a week with my shepherd. And there's three, nearly four years of 14 sessions a week with my Rottweiler. Like, fuck. Let me just give you the maths here. I'm just going to give you the maths on my shepherd. So we have done approximately calculator 14 times 365. No. 14 times 52 times 2. We've done 1,500 training sessions. Erin, you've done two. This is why you're fucking not as far on. How many of you can handle that say you've done 1,500 training sessions with your dog? And that's in one, one scenario. Like, all we train is obedience, strike, and protection. That's it. We don't train behavior stuff. They don't walk on a lead. They don't social. Like, we're working on about 35 hours, so not a lot. Yeah, exactly. I'll drop a message by the loud stupid dog tomorrow. Yeah, awesome, Aaron. I like it. I'm working on the lady with Bruce's brother. That dog is mental. Glad I didn't pick that puppy. Rosie, I don't understand it. It's fucking free. Why? Like, these people have got problems. I'm going to fix them for free. They can leave after day 29 if they want. There's no drama. 
<coughs> Something to aim for, say 50-ish hours a week. Oh no, we don't train that much, nowhere near. Nowhere near. 15 hours a week, maybe. I mean, I train more than 50 hours a week, but not my own dogs. Yeah, 15, I probably train 15 hours a week because generally we'll do two sessions and it'll be about an hour each per day. I've got two dogs to train as well. And I've just considered, I'm in consideration at the moment of putting my shepherd through IPO as well. So she would need um, to learn the entire IPO routine. Which has changed. It's a headache. When starting out, how long do you recommend training for at a time? Kerry, the dog dictates how long the training session is. So I go out with an accomplishment, to something to achieve in the session. That thing. Oh, no, I don't want to do that. It's not too big. But, so let's say I'm going out for... This is not working, is it? Right. So I go out with... with um, a goal in mind. For I can say, let that, let's say that goal is to improve the speed of the retrieve. If I throw the dumbbell and she brings it back like she's been set on fire, that's the end of the session. Three minutes. Some sessions are 40 minutes. Some sessions are two hours. Like The dog will tell you how long you can train for, but you've got to end on a good note. So if the dog's doing really well 15 minutes in, don't try and push for 30. Also, Alexia, don't agree with that. 10, 15 minutes a time, 30, 40 minutes a day. Sometimes I'll work about 20 minutes away from my training field, like from my house to my training field. I will sometimes drive there, ask for heel once, and drive home. Because it was perfect. Like today, I went tracking, and I laid one track, and he tracked it. It would have been 100 points at the World Championships. So that was it. That was the end. What else we got? I'd love to tell him all the stupid job gets in the way. Yeah, I can imagine, Rosie. Sucks. End on a high. Yeah, absolutely end on a high. If you want to this... We're going to get into this another day, but there's something called latent learning, which is the dog's ability to learn after the session. Um, so you have to end with the intention that you went out with. So if I want a fast retrieve, then the last thing the dog does before it goes back in the car and goes in its box is a fast retrieve. Alright guys, any last questions? I'm about to log off. 47 minutes in. Is it normal for pups to take personal items from you and put them in a bed? Yeah, completely normal, Joy. Completely normal. Learn about latent learning, it's interesting. Yeah, Rosie, super interesting. Super, super interesting. Latent learning is probably one of the biggest principles that I build my training programs around. Any more for any more? I'd stop Bruce eating socks. Rosie, stop letting Bruce get near socks. Extinction is the way that I would deal with this. Completely. So if he can never get near socks, he won't eat socks. That's a management issue, not a training issue. Nope, time to go make training plans and watch people in ambulances. Enjoy. Extinction of socks. No, extinction of behavior. Bye, right, guys. Take it easy. Thank you all for tuning in. It's all kinds of things, but I have to have them or oh, it's in my hand sometime in that day. Oh, yeah, yeah okay, I understand. Yeah, joy, normal, normal. Don't worry about it. It will probably pass. If it doesn't pass, we can address it. But there's no point in fucking making problems. We don't need to address them. Thanks, great life. Thanks, Rosie. I appreciate that. And I appreciate you all for tuning in. All 14 of you, go and sign someone up tonight. 64 members is the aim by the end of the night. Free Skype session in it. All free one-to-one -one if you live near me. Take it easy, guys.